Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. When I accepted this position a year ago, I said that my number one priority would be putting our children first. This continues to be my focus, doing whatever is necessary to make sure our children get the education they need to succeed. Education is the foundation on which we build the future. It is the key to opportunity and the ticket every child needs to pursue their dreams, meet their needs, and ultimately support their loved ones. The hard work necessary to make this the reality for every student in every classroom takes a big step forward today. About a year ago, I started a consultation process to discuss the possibility of school reorganization and or closures using criteria that reflected the change in realities of Bermuda. Declining birth rate, lower enrollment, disparity in cost per student, and challenges brought on by extreme national debt. Other criteria included the provision of quality programs, capacity and accessibility of schools, health and safety, transportation and maintenance concerns, and other optimal uses of school facilities. The consultation process yielded valuable feedback, which was carefully considered, but it became obvious that I needed more information to move the process towards decisions that were fact-based, sensible, and fair. To bring that about, I expanded the consultation process by setting up the School Advisory Committee, a group of volunteers representing parents, educators, community members, and business leaders. I asked them to review the state of our primary schools and identify ways to improve and expand our public education so that it serves our students going forward. The School Advisory Committee submitted its report and in recent weeks we have been in recent weeks we have presented the findings to education stakeholder groups. Today I have asked you here as a first step to present in the report to the wider public. First, I want to make a few remarks about the findings of the report. In doing so, I'm not going to mince words because they confirm my suspicion of major failings in a system that is meant to serve our children. School infrastructure, for one, is in terrible state. No child can get a good education in some of the terrible conditions detailed here. But you have my commitment and the commitment of this government that we will find the resources to address the crumbling infrastructure. There are threats to health and safety. Fixing them has to be our first priority, and we are taking steps to address items cited by the SCORE committee. The issues involving mold, water leakage, and security are being addressed on an immediate basis. We are nowhere near having the competitive public education system we want for Bermuda. There are places that are making progress and even some shining examples of a job well done. But only some progress is not acceptable when we're talking about our children and the future we have the responsibility to help them build. There is something for everyone to dislike in the pages of this report. Beyond the items I've just touched on, the report outlines scenarios for possible school consolidations or closures and highlights other matters that need immediate attention. Working our way through these towards decisions that make sense for our kids and the system that serves them will be painful, but we have to do it. We have to right-size the system and do it in ways that ensures our children's needs are met. As for how we got here, I'm not interested in laying blame. I am interested in solutions and progress. The reason I initiated this process was to establish the broadest understanding of where we are and to have clarity on the options for positive action. This is why I made the process as open and transparent as possible and why the focus going forward 
will continue to emphasize broad consultation with all stakeholders. With that in mind, it is vitally important that all stakeholders, parents, teachers, community leaders, consider the scenarios outlined in this report and share their views with me and ministry representatives at the consultation meetings which will soon be held. This is something we all need to take on. Whether you have children in school or not, the focus and commitment to education impacts all of us, shaping the life of the island and the strength of our economy in the expression of our culture and in the life of our democracy. Making sure our children get the education they need is making sure the future is strong for all of us. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. I believe that, but I know it will take all of us working together to do it. Now let me change gears a bit and outline how the next phase of consultation will work. First, let me point out that the school committee has made presentations on data findings to the Board of Education, school principals and administrators, all union executive members, parents and PTA presidents and vice presidents, primary school union representatives, senior officers at the Department of Education, and my cabinet colleagues. I'd like to highlight some of the findings of the school report as presented to these key stakeholder groups during the past two weeks. These include the following. The condition of primary schools require many forms of upgrades for safety and health, accessibility, structural system improvements, as well as upgrades to support 21st century learning. There are inequities across primary schools with regards to special ed programming. Transportation and traffic considerations at the primary level vary from school to school and will impact different schools and their surrounding areas depending on reorganization and or closure decisions. Scenarios have been created based on a 40 square foot requirement per child. Insufficient resources have many teachers and parents using their own funds to purchase supplies necessary to effectively present and teach the current curriculum. It is of utmost importance that all planning keep children and their education experience at the forefront. Parents and the public should know that I have already begun to personally visit every primary school along with the Acting Commissioner of Education and our Facilities Manager, using the health and safety concerns outlined in the report as a guide. It is our intention to map out a capital expenditure plan to address the school building issues in both the short and long term. In the school report, the advisory committee also provided data-driven scenarios as to which schools could be considered feasible for reorganizations or school closure within the context of their research. The scenarios were presented by school zones as follows. Central Zone, Scenario 1, Resolve Overutilization at West Pembroke Primary School. Scenario 2, Close Gilbert Institute and transition staff and students to Prospect Primary School. Scenario three, close Prospect Primary School and transition staff and students to Victor Scott Primary School and Padgett Primary School. Eastern Zone, Scenario 1A, close St. David's Primary School and transition staff and students to East End Primary School and St. George's Preparatory School. Scenario 1B, resolve overutilization at Harrington Sound Primary School and Francis Patton Primary School. Scenario 2, keep all schools open and resolve overutilization at Harrington Sound Primary School and Francis Patton Primary School. Western Zone, Scenario 1, Resolve overutilization at Port Royal Primary School and Purvis Primary School by transitioning students to West End Primary School. Scenario 2. 
close Heron Bay Primary School and transition staff and students to West End Primary School. Scenario three, Resolve overutilization at Port Royal Primary School and Parvis Primary School and transition students to Padgett Primary School. Scenario four, maintain the status quo by keeping all schools open. Let me emphasize that the School Advisory Committee was mandated to collect and present data, not to make decisions. In this regard, they, had offered, they have offered these scenarios to engage focus and inform decision making. However, I encourage all parents and the general public to read the school report in detail as the ministry is interested in solutions. It is important to note that at this point I am just sharing the data findings as promised. I have not made a decision on school regarding school reorganizations or school closures. I am not wedded to these scenarios. I will be seeking feedback on them and other possible alternatives. Collaboration from all stakeholders is needed if we are to make this transformation a reality for the Bermuda public school system. The open consultation process starts today, February the 8th, and will continue for four weeks ending on March 4th. There will be three public, public consultation meetings held in February. The time and location of the meetings will be announced later. At this open after this open consultation period closes, all collected information will be considered with the intent of reaching a decision. The outcome of this entire process will determine the need and scope of any further possible consultation. Also, the ministry will open the same email address it used when it started this consultation process in February of last year, education consultation at moed.bm, to receive feedback about the report's findings and any other suggestions from all stakeholders and the general public. And let me just repeat that email address again, education consultation at moed.bm. In closing, let me say that the data findings detailed in the score report and any other feedback I receive from stakeholders will be used as a foundation to lay the building blocks necessary to move the public school system towards improving the quality for our students' educational experience. My priority will continue to be putting our children first. There's a lot of work ahead of us, but as we all know, Change does not happen overnight. As such, we endeavor to start the building today so that in the long term, the public school system will be one that meets the needs of our children. Certainly, by all of us working together, we can change our education system to provide the quality education that our children deserve. Thank you. Given that the registration, school registration has begun or is about to begin, isn't it unfair to keep parents in waiting as to knowing which schools are going to be closed or consolidated as the case may be? Well, Gary, not at all. First, no decision has been made and operations do need to continue, and enrollment data is critical, um, even in our decision-making process to understand um, what is our intake um, gonna look like for this coming school year. So we do need that data for our process. What if a parent registers their child for a certain school and then that becomes one of the schools that is consolidated or closed? Well, we're not to that point yet, Gary, so I really can't, um, you know, answer hypothetical questions at this point. Hypothetical to you, but parents no doubt would have some concerns about, about that situation, isn't it? Yes, and I, and I can appreciate parents' concerns, and we want the input of all of our stakeholders, our, our, our parents, so we really en encourage everyone to be a part of this process because we're all in this together. Are you able to see which schools were highlighted by the school committee as in being worse condition than any others? 
they would require immediate attention? I think there are a lot of examples um, where we have to provide immediate attention and we're doing that. Which schools can you see? Well, I, I think that it's, it's issues such as mold and water leakage and, and things like that that we're immediately addressing. Minister, we know what the issues are. We've been reporting on it for the last three or four weeks. Can you see which schools are most affected or least affected? Yeah. Well, well, Gary, all of those items are outlined in the school report. And what we've actually been doing is using that list, going around to all of the schools and seeing what needs to be addressed immediately, what needs a medium term and long term plans, and we're addressing it appropriately. You still haven't answered the question, Minister. Are you able to see which schools are least or worst affected? I, I think all of that information is, is outlined in detail in the report, and I would encourage um, the, the public to, to look at that report. That report should be live on our website right now, www.moed.bm. The Ministry of Education, as many other ministries, those governments suffered budget cuts in the 2014-2015 budget, 2015-2016 uh, budget, sorry. Had those cuts not been implemented, do you think that the state of the public schools would, would have been better than they are now? I disagree with that. Um, we've, we've managed a, a lot of our budget reductions by early retirement, as an example. Um, we're talking about, in a lot of cases, just um, capital plans that have to be put in place to address some of our aging infrastructure. Gary, our newest school is older than me, and I went 49 last week. Yeah. On another note, um, is the announcement of the closure or consolidation of schools dependent on the outcome of the Department of Education versus Matthew? I, I, I wouldn't say it's dependent on that at all. I mean, we're, you know, we're going through this process, I, I think, and we've been very consistent with the consultation, looking to get information in the broadest possible uh, ways from the public, and we are using that information to make informed decisions, and, and we have to continue to, to govern and, and manage our school system, and that's what we're doing. What, what is the fear that you have of naming which schools are least or least affected? I, I don't have any fear. I mean, I commissioned this report. I want this to be available for all public. As a matter of fact, I haven't even had the final copy of this report for a month. I think that's a record of any government um, in releasing a report like this to the public. You mentioned to me that if we dusted off reports from the 80s and, <laughs> and just put 2016 on them, that they would have the same results. Why was it necessary then to go through this entire process again? Well, you know, that, that's a very interesting question. And we've had this um, many times in the past, Gary. Um, we can go and look at, at examples of how things have not been addressed for years. I'm not interested in laying blame for this. My job as the, as the minister is to put together a plan and to execute on it. And Bermuda should demand that of me. And you have my commitment and the public has my commitment that while I am in this post, we will do our best to ensure that this is addressed. It, it's time. We, this, a lot of things have been outstanding for years, Gary, and you know, our, our children's um, future has, uh, is at stake with some of this, and, and that is not something that I'm prepared to sit on my laurels and allow it to happen. Um, Sarah, something. <coughs> um, can you rule out that any schools will be closed this academic year? No, I cannot rule that out, but no decision has been made on that. Okay. Um, and I guess to repeat um, Gary's question, I mean, do you think that's fair on parents, you know, putting their children in, in to a school where, where it's possible that it should be closing this year? When we started this consultation process last year, um, the initial criteria that I used um, back then was one school per zone. However, it became very clear that more information was needed. And, you know, we, we made a, a few decisions last year, rolling up some preschools into primary schools that worked well. Um, we said that we wanted to get more information to make informed decisions. Um, and that's why this report was put together. We will continue this consultation process and we need to make decisions that are in the best interest of our system as a whole. And that's what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, and the announcement was made that um, the Ministry of Education was charged with, uh, is it one million savings? Yeah. Is, I, does that still sound a bit like this report? So let, let me address that. Um, 
Last year, there was a budget item, a line item that said $1 million in, in savings from school reorganization. I made it clear last year that we found those savings in early retirements. I was also very clear that my opinion is if we're looking to do some changes in schools just to save a couple dollars, it would be a mistake. I still stand by that. We have to make look at ways to provide better equity and you know provide children with the best programming and resources that we have available across the board and to it and to achieve that if we have to close and consolidate schools that's something that we would have to very seriously consider but it is not about saving a couple of dollars is that going to be um, any sweetener in the budget for uh, the ministry of education in light of the report. Well, one of the things that I, I said here is that this government does recognize that we have work to do and we're committed to finding the resources to, to, to do it. So we are in the process of putting together a capital expenditure plan. That's why uh, the, the acting commissioner, facilities manager, and myself uh, personally going around to every facility. Once we have that in place, I, I will be looking to have that funded. And I'm um, fairly sure that we have the commitment to get that done. This government recognizes that this is important and we are committed to making this happen. Well, just one quick question. Um, can you elaborate on what resolve overutilization actually means in the scenarios that are outlined? Yeah, um, let, let, me, let me give an example on that. So examples that were put in the report were based on a 40 square foot for 40 square foot per child scenario now what does that mean and it means in, in 21st century education there are there's resource space there's activity space that's required if you're in a science class as, as an example you want to be able to do science projects so i, I think that i, I want to put right out there the the thought of having to rebuild our whole infrastructure is a zero percent probability that's not going to happen um, and, and i think it's unrealistic to think of that however what we're doing is looking at, at other ways to accomplish this. Can we make space available to provide resource space that schools can, can rotate classrooms through? So there's other ways which we believe we can accomplish that and we are working to, to, to find that out and put that plan in action. Dr. Harvey, did you okay. have anything to no. ask? Um, Gary had one last one. Yes, last year we did a story highlighting the low registration numbers at schools and it suggested which schools are possibly earmarked for, for closure or, or consolidation. The Gazette rehashed that story just last month, I think. So does the ministry not have any indication, and again, we've had a declining birth rate for a number of years. Does the ministry not have any indication as to which schools it will or will not be closing or consolidating um, based on those okay. no, no, Gary, I think what the, what the population trends outlined, it showed registration at individual schools. If you look at some of the scenarios that are presented in this report, and one of the things that we want to get from the, that I want to get from the public, do you agree with these scenarios? Are there other alternatives for these scenarios? Um, so at, at this point, we're looking at it more of per zone and not necessarily for per school. And how, how will that work? So um, look at the scenarios presented here. Again, as I stated, those scenarios are a, a way to, to get us to start to think. Do you agree with those scenarios? Are there other scenarios that you would think of and provide us with that with that information just kicking the pan to turn down the road minister don't you no i i disagree with that we're actually um you know we, we put this together because we want the public to to know um what the environment looks like and we want to consult with the public we want to talk to our key stakeholders and our parents we want parent involvement in this let's put this together bermuda because this is something that we should do as an island